uh, as a hot girl, so I really wouldn't know. If you watched the first episode of the anime, you'd think it's about the same sort of thing. This is because the first episode is actually episode 17, just so they could show an episode that's more like the video game. <laughs> this is why we appreciate Haruhi and Bakuno, another anime that doesn't do a piss poor job in this continuous narrative. <laughs> Anyway, episode two is when the real story starts. And the real story is about two completely heterosexual friends named Brandon and Harry. Brandon has a girlfriend named Maria, and then they join the mafia, and Maria marries the mafia boss. This doesn't bother Brandon at all, because he is really gay for the mafia boss. The boss's name is Big Daddy. Let that one sink in a bit. Eventually, Harry performs a gay coup on the gay mafia they belong to and shoots Brandon in the eye and out of a gay glass elevator. <laughs> After the gay dust clears, Brandon is gay resurrected and goes around killing all of his old friends in order to get to Harry. Everyone in the cast is killed and the series ends with the mostly crippled, gay, undead Brandon reminiscing with Harry in the place they used to hang out at as kids. Then they get attacked by SWAT members and Brandon shields Harry with his body and they both die together as special friends. I don't know how a show that's so sign-in could be so yowly at the same time. Then Graves is the Gundam Wing of zombie shoot 'em up shows. We go from gay zombies to heteronormative vampires with... love cauldron that was high school biology. But they really get together as Edward repeatedly saves Bella from a van, from a group of rapists, from perfectly nice human boys who just want to ask her to the prom. He ultimately saves her from an evil vampire who, before dying, bites Bella. Vampirism is transmitted through venom, so his bite would have made Bella a vampire, which is the thing she wants most in the whole universe, as she already has a sparkly flying pony. But Edward sucks out the vamp venom and Bella stays human because these books are really all about abstinence. And if vampires represent sexuality, the climax of this book is a metaphor for that time you got drunk in junior year and dry humps the delinquent in your Spanish class. For Bella's eyes, we meet the rest of the Cullens, who have assorted unfortunate human backstories. <laughs> which is awesome. <laughs> also, the Cullens mostly sort of have superpowers in addition to being vampires, so once again, our clear winner is Emmett with the power to fight bears. <laughs> in the second bad new moon, <laughs> right that crossover, Edward plays his I'm breaking up with you and it's really for the best card. Bella's so depressed we get eight blank pages in the book. <laughs> and he becomes a total Debbie Downer instead of going for the nice werewolf boy. Especially, especially because she has nothing to be afraid of. If vampires in this series sparkle in the sunshine, I'm sure the werewolves are like kittens, but with sideburns. Instead, Bella throws herself off the cliff because extreme sports make her vampire hallucinate. Edward thinks she's dead and goes to Italy to see the vampire mafia about assisted drama queen suicide. But Bella stops him just in time. Smyers tries to beat into our heads. The story is just like Vampire Romeo and Juliet. That's fair because I thought Romeo and Juliet were stupid too. In the third book, Eclipse, again as he rips parts out of Bella's truck so she can't go visit her werewolf boyfriend. A romantic gesture of which I haven't seen the like of since the last time I watched a Lifetime movie. <laughs> but at least when your boyfriend acts like a dick in a Lifetime movie, you know you've been chasing him through the woods with an axe sometime in the next 90 minutes. This never happens in Eclipse, no matter how much fan fiction I read. <laughs> oh, oh, and another evil vampire from back in the first book is out to kill Bella with a vampire army, but she fails and dies. And now that the only danger to Bella is herself, 
Edward and Bella get vampire engaged. <laughs> and so we come to the fourth and most controversial book of the series, Breaking Dawn. <laughs> Right wing, pro abstinence, anti choice agenda. As every woman ends up in a, as everyone ends up in a heteronormative relationship, and we learn that women just need babies to be happy. <laughs> if this is true, it's a pretty terrible promotion of ethics. <laughs> yeah, yes, Bella and Edward wait to have sex until they're married, but the experience leaves Bella bruised and battered, Edward hating himself and wanting to never do it again. <laughs> and Bella pregnant with a potentially evil half-breed monster baby. <laughs> oh, and it's delivered via her husband eating it out of her womb. Yes. <laughs> Bella breaks her body and is delivered via her husband yes. eating it out of her womb. <laughs> subject of vampires, Helsing! <laughs> was covered in our last two productions of Spoiler the Pan. <laughs> you guys had the reaction, the exact reaction I wanted. So instead, let's talk about Moon Phase. <laughs> no, not Moon Face, Moon Phase. <laughs> the anime that, thank you for the groans, the anime that won ped the Pedophilia of the Year Award. <laughs> after Michael Jackson died. Oh. Well, that is not too soon. I heard, it, too soon. I heard a joke about that the day after he died. <laughs> Moonface teaches us that as long as you're immortal, it doesn't matter if he's 21 and you're 12. <laughs> Hazuki, our cat ear wearing vampire heroine du jour, can go in the sun just fine. She could eat human food instead of sucking blood, even if it's slathered in garlic. Hell, she could even cross running water and is just peachy keen around holy relics. <laughs> she pretty, this, is, this is a very groan-worthy bit. <laughs> she pretty much fails in every way at being a horrible spawn of darkness. In fact, she's more of a horrible spawn of Chobits. She is the worst example of vampirism since Edward Cullen was the disco ball for his own daytime sparkle raid. <laughs> <laughs> the difference is, Moonface vampires don't sparkle, they wear cat ears. They aren't forced to due to some weird behavioral compulsion rooted in their vampiric nature. They all just want to for some reason. This still makes them more terrifying than the vampires from Twilight. And Twilight had just as many creepy pedophiles. If you count falling in love with a fetus, that was. <laughs> Moonface tricks you into watching it by mixing demon fighting ninja action with shoujo so sweet it could give cookie monster cavities. <laughs> Here, just listen to these episode descriptions taken off Wikipedia. <laughs> Episode 24. Kohei, his grandfather, and the Shrine Maidens chase Hazuki to the Castle of Darkness to confront their evil sister, Arte, finding themselves in a battle for their lives, which pushes the forces of light up against the demonic power of the underworld. <laughs> Episode 25. Kohei and Hazuki move in together on their magical floating shrine house and get their friend drunk while debating whether or not tiny gods wear underwear. <laughs> the true story. The whole anime was really a bad attempt to sell cat ears to schoolgirls, and the makers of the anime should be ashamed of themselves. On a related note, who wants to buy an official pair of DO-13 cat ears? Woo! <laughs> On the subject of Rob being a prostitute, cat ears... <laughs> you know those Saturday nights, those really lonely Saturday nights, when you invite a lady friend over to tie your balls up with an inelastic band and step on them while wearing high heels? Uh, no? Uh, me neither. 
Anyway, you also don't know 